Oh. Okay, so in the last video, we talked about how there was a bit of a paradox in what we would expect from the image and how I felt the bones moving. So going back to that, we felt the sit bones widening and narrowing as we bend and straighten our legs. Now we would expect from the pelvic calf doing that motion, sit bones widening, we'd expect the iliac crest, the top of the pelvic calf, to be coming in. Now in my personal feeling, I was like, well, I don't really feel that. It feels either like it's staying in place or maybe like it's even doing the opposite. And I sort of guessed that maybe that was because I could think about it in a different plane. So remember we have three dimensional movement. This bone is spiraling in the body and I'm basically building up through stages how the bone is spiraling. This is a method that is taught by one of my teachers, Eric Franklin, and I think it's a very good way for the geometrically minded to think about it. If it doesn't work for you, skip a few videos forward and I'll give you the, the synthesized movement, the full spiral movement, but now we're breaking it down by planes. So, to understand the planes, the first thing I felt was the sit bones moving out, iliac crest theoretically moving in. Now, in order to think of planes, you have to think about where would the bones rest? In which plane would they lie? So I like to think about three planes. One is the door plane, one is the table plane, and one is the wall plane. Okay? This kind of spatially orients the way I think about it. Um, those are also called the transverse plane, the dorsal plane, and the sagittal plane, and those are anatomical terms. Um, but it's easier, I think, with the images to think about a table, a door, and a wall. So the first movement, if you do this, if you move your hands like this, I'm curving my elbows straight out and up. It would be as though I had rested my hands against the door and I was sliding the bones on the door, right? If I put my hands on the table, the bones would be rocking around as I did this, right? So they're, mo they're not moving in that plane, they're actually moving in the door plane. Now the transverse plane, the movement is a little bit different and that's what we're gonna look at now. So, if you remember back to what I said about the sacrum being like an arrow or an arrow head, the spine is like an arrow and the sacrum is the arrow head, then this, this motion will make a lot more sense. So the spine is the shaft and the sacrum is the arrow head and as I bend my legs it's as though that arrow is shooting down into the earth or it's kind of like um, I have the image of a post hole digger, you know you got the two handles and you drop into the earth and you spread the handles and it digs the earth out and you can dig a hole for a post. Um, yeah, so feel that. Go ahead and bend and straighten your legs and feel that the sacrum just sort of wrestles, wrestles, rests or nestles down as it is nutating and the whole spine is kind of riding with that. Now if you imagine the sacrum dropping down and you remember that it is flanked by the two pelvic calves, if we put pressure on top, what that will naturally do is drive the pelvic calves outwards, right? And we're talking about the back of the pelvis now, the PSIS, the back bump. So if you follow your iliac crest around, you kind of feel where your dimples might be around there. It's easier or harder to find on certain body types. You can imagine that those two bumps, um, the other way to think about that is the way we first found the sacrum by resting the hand. The outsides of my hand will be more or less around those two bumps. So if I think about those two bumps as now being driven outwards as I bend my legs, and that is by the action of the dropping arrow, the spine. Go ahead and try to feel that, that the back of the pelvic halves widen and then narrow and it widens and narrows. So they open almost like a saloon door swinging and then they close and they open and they close or like curtains on a stage, the curtains slide open and slide closed and slide open and slide closed. So that's one perspective of that plane of motion. Just like the sit bones and the iliac crest in the dorsal plane or in the door plane, we're gonna think about different 
sort of landmarks of how this bone is moving. So naturally, we want to go to the other side. So if I'm at the PSIS, where do I want to go? The pubic bone. I started at the bottom, went to the top. Now I've gone to the back. Now I want to go to the front. So if the sacrum is driving the pelvic halves apart, go ahead and try this with your hands. If you're touching your two fingers together and those, that's your pubic bone, and your thumbs are in back, that's your PSIS, if you had a bony model, it would look like this. I'd be making the pelvic ring now like that. Now, if the motion is driving your thumbs apart, you'll feel an increase of pressure in your middle fingers, right? Your pubic bone, right? So what I'm realizing now is that in this sort of paradigm, the pubic symphysis, that piece of cartilage connecting the two front halves of the pelvic halves, is going to be compressing or absorbing some of this force as I bend my legs. So let's try that image. So I have the backs opening and the pubic symphysis is rebounding, resonating, gathering up that potential energy, and then it's expanding back out. So I have the pubic symphysis coming together and apart. I really like that image of storing elastic energy, almost like a rubber ball. It's like storing the energy in order to bounce. And this is where you start to feel that these images can really give way to physical movements, that embodying the biomechanics of the body can actually improve the function of our body. Uh, to quote Eric Franklin, he says, embodying function improves function. And I always scratch my head when he said that for the longest time. Like, what is he talking about? But I think he's right. So here we go. The pubic bone is absorbing force, releasing, right? It's, it's absorbing and releasing. I have the back pelvic halves, the back of the pelvic halves widening, the front compressing, right? If you want to touch the body, you can move your hands like this. So I'm sliding my hands from the back to the front as I bend and then the front to the back. And that can help me sort of feel that. Now, if you remember when we talked about the trabeculi, the way the weight actually travels in the bones, it, it's actually doing this path that now we're looking at and realizing the bone is actually moving in. So go ahead and feel once again, the back widens and narrows and the front compresses and releases. So we've looked at two planes of movement. We looked first at the dorsal plane, and that's what the sit bone swinging out and the iliac crest theoretically moving in. Sit bone swing in and iliac crest out. That was the first plane. The second plane, that was the door plane. The second plane is the table plane, where if I rest my hands on the table, the back opens and the front is closing, and then it reverses as I straighten. There's one more plane we're going to look at in the next video, the sagittal or wall plane. Right.